Good morning to you. Todd Meany here with our good friend AJ Patini. Uh, how you doing, man? Good. Good, good to morning, see you. Sir. What a beautiful day. It is spectacular. And, and, and the garden looks great. Boy, those peppers in the back, those yeah. look nice. No. And things seem to be going pretty well. Yeah, it's coming along. So we harvested last week. We pulled quite a bit out last week. Yeah. And so this week, especially with the cooler temps, just kind of maintaining. So we had the bug issue. We got ahead of it. Right. I think we're in good shape now. So now we're just about keeping it clean. There's a couple peppers we can pull. Um, a little bit of heat, and that's coming up. Yeah, That'll start to get those tomatoes really going. Same thing with the zucchini. Um, same thing with really everything else. So That's um, awesome. I love it. So while the garden's growing, uh, let's talk about pollinator plants and pollinator gardens, which, um, you know, Mar our producer Margo was telling, she goes, AJ's going to talk about pollinators. And I go, you mean just like, like bees and hummingbirds and things yeah, like that. I yeah, go, what a great yeah. idea because one, we, you know, everybody talks about the bees, the bee population. Yeah. We need to keep those things going. But what a beautiful way to do it too. You know, my father, just I love him, but he said something so profound. Yeah. He's like, if you want bees, you need flowers. That's right. Like it just. That's right. It's so simple and it's so true and it just, it's awesome. So, so we anyway, can make a whole garden out of bees. Oh yeah. 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 Absolutely. So and these are just, I mean, one. I mean, they're beautiful flowers. Yep. But bees, butterflies, hummingbirds love them. And I mean, they just attract, you know, just everything. And they're beautiful. Mm -hmm. And they're low maintenance and they perform so well. It's just awesome. So this is a butterfly bush. And this will attract pretty much everything. Hummingbirds, butterflies, really? bees. It is a magnet. Pink my And so, um, and it blooms nonstop. And then if you, you know, either you want to get it blooming more, you can kind of see it's throwing out new shoots. Yep. With the old shoots, you can either let those just fall off or you can clean them up if you want. And I mean, if it gets a little bit bigger than you want it, you can whack them back, you know, right in half. This is a dwarf version, but there's other older versions that get, you know, six, eight feet tall. Oh, wow. And I mean, those things are a spectacle. They're magnificent. Um, but if you have a bee allergy, you want to put those more away from the house. Sure, sure. They do their job well. <laughs> so you want to make sure that you pay right, attention. Right. Um, daisies, which we've talked about on so many different things. They're deer resistant. They're long bloomers. They bloom early in the spring yep. to late in the fall. And they're beautiful. Um, they're gorgeous. And they're really low maintenance. And they're high perfumers, but you know bees and butterflies love them. So mm -hmm. you know, especially bees, they hold up really well. And then same thing with lavender. Um, lavender's got one. I don't know if you've smelled it, but it smells wonderful. Oh my gosh! So you know, wow. putting that right by your patio. That is fragrant. You know, oh yeah, and just get that evening breeze. Oh, that really that's creates nice. just a great smell. environment. Smell, it's good. But it's got these beautiful blue flowers. So bees and butterflies love those as well. Yeah. Um, and just a great plant. It's deer resistant. You could bring it inside the house, you know, the sprigs, mm. just dress it up a little bit. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, as far as for butterflies, butterflies like to have clustered flowers. So like these lantana, which again, bloom beautifully all summer long. These are an annual, um, but just the, the, you know, the butterflies will land here and just kind of go in there. Same oh, thing cool. with pentas and echinacea. And then everybody's favorite. Those so hummingbirds, man. Those hummingbirds. Yeah. So that's really, you know, and they're, they're when they come by, it's just such a special treat. So some things that hummingbirds really love, they love the flowers that really um, form like a cone. So Monarda is great for bees actually, but it's also great for hummingbirds. And it's called bee balm. Um, this is wonderful. Petunias and Diplodina mandevilla are wonderful. Um, and it's anything... gotta have that kind of like a cone or like a trumpet kind yeah, of thing, right? Yeah, exactly, As you were exactly. Saying, trumpet flower. So, That's cool. Cause they'll just go right in there. Yeah. And they go from there. And then just good old fashioned hummingbird feeders are a great way to attract hummingbirds. They work really well. You want to get a good high quality one. Yeah. Um, that way it doesn't leak. And then you can either get pre-mixed, you know, formula or you can mix your own. Mm -hmm. But that's a great way to attract hummingbirds also. That's awesome. I love it. Pollinator gardens. Yeah. Something you can add to the uh, add to the vegetable garden or hang out here. You can attract bees, hummingbirds, and those beautiful butterflies. Yeah. Awesome. AJ, awesome. thanks so much. No. Good to see you, my friend. Good to see you. All right, we'll send it back to you guys. You've got to smell this lavender. I'll bring some up to you. Oh, yum. Yes. Mm. Yes. That helps you sleep at yes. night. The lavender? Right? Yeah. I always pick lavender yeah. when I get a pedicure because oh. I put a little oil in the water, you know? Yeah. Oh, love it.